Welcome to this week's facelift makeup tutorial. Yes, it is that powerful. Many of us have either genetically inherited downturn features, or as we age, our features tend to move downward and sag a little bit. It is amazing the power of makeup to be able to change shape and to create lift. So this is going from downturned to upturned. This is how you erase 2020 from your face and get your happy back on. It is the beauty of makeup in my opinion. It's one of the things that I love so much about it is the transformative effect if you so choose. I love being without it. I love au naturel. I think that's the beautiful thing also of being a woman in her prime is the love and acceptance of who she is and what she has. But at the same time, if you have the tools in your toolkit and the skill set, you have an amazing opportunity in the right moment to be able to create powerful change. And that's what I want to impart in today's video is the ability to do it if you so desire. I'm starting with a bare face. I have parted my hair down the middle. I'm just clipping it back. I feel like a 12 year old here today, but that's okay because I'm going to split my face in half essentially. I'm going to do makeup the wrong way on one side, the right way on the other side. So at the moment, I'm going to apply foundation and concealer and primer and all of that, not necessarily in that order. I will also provide a link to my no smudge, no budge uh, makeup tutorial as well to help you keep your makeup in place. But I will revisit you in just a second when all of that's applied. Okay, great, here's the starting point. Everything will be listed in the description portion below so you can find all of the products used. We're gonna start with the eyebrows and I'm going to show you, since they are the window to our eyes, how framing them can really initiate whether we're going to have an upturned eye or a downturned eye. For full disclosure, I just had my eyebrows tattooed and microbladed about a week ago. So thank you, Connie, because I now feel like I've got thicker brows again, but I'm still going to use a brow pomade to really emphasize this and show you the difference between how you fill in your eyebrows. So let's use this side of my face, which is camera right for the downturn side, camera left will be the upturn. So when we're going in with our brow and we fill in, the area that we have to be really, really careful with is this outer portion of the brow the part that turns down. We have to be careful not to overemphasize that. So since this is the wrong side, I'm going to follow this line and I'm gonna make it even a little bit longer because sometimes we do that as we've lost brow fullness and definition. We go in, we thicken, we lengthen, but we make the mistake of lengthening and pulling the shape downward. So this brow is going to be my droopy brow and I'm just gonna carry that tail down. All right, for comparison, this side, we're going to change the outer part of the brow and we're going to flick it out a little bit. So I'm building in my base underneath and here's where it's different. When I come out to the side, I'm not gonna go as long as I did on the other one. And I'm gonna continue this line a little bit outward and up. You see how my strokes are going out and up a little bit? So I'm gonna fill in like I did with the other, but I'm not doing the downturn. I'm really going to come in on the height of the brow and continue a few strokes outward, like so. So it's gonna be slightly shorter than the other. But I think you can already see the difference in shape, how this brow comes out and this brow is more severe and it's coming down. It's going to change also how we do our makeup. For eye makeup, I, I love this palette. I featured this before in a previous video. It's CoverGirl Chocoholic Scented. 
It's so inexpensive. The colors are beautiful and it does, it does smell of chocolate. So it's kind of perfect for the holidays as well. So what happens is our lids start to get a little bit heavier and we are often accustomed to putting the lightest shade on the lid. And what that can do is that can really weigh the lid down actually, make the lid seem heavier. So on this side, I will use the light shade on the lid. On this side, I'm actually going to use a warmer shade, a little bit more of a purpley rust. I'm going to stay in the plum purple family today just because of what I'm wearing. So I'm going to keep it a little bit warmer and darker. And when you have heaviness in your lids, it helps to hide that as well as bringing that crease line up higher. Here's the important part of this process is this is the eye that's going to have the upturn. So to do that, we have to be very careful not to drag the makeup down. So just like the outer part of this eyebrow went out, the outer part of this makeup is also going to follow that line and just sort of go up and out. A lot of blending, a lot of smoothing but we are following this line, this framework that our eyebrows have created. So I'm going to stop right there. On the eye that's going to be the mistake, I will take the same darker plum color and I'm going to now follow the natural shape of my eye, which is more of a rounded downturn. So I'm going to go in the crease and make the mistake of not going high enough in the crease and I'm going to follow the shape. So I'm not making any adjustments in terms of altering shape. I'm simply following my shape and bringing that down. Okay, so here we're displaying the difference already that you're seeing. Downturn in the brow, downturn in the makeup. The makeup here is coming up and out. So we're going to complete the eye makeup and focus on the outer corner here. I'm going to use, I used this sort of rusty color as the color for the crease line. Now I'm going in with this darker brown and I'm going to build out on this side. But instead of going all the way down, I'm cheating a little bit and I'm creating a new endpoint for the outer eye. And I'm lifting that out to meet the area that I had just built. Perfect. So what you're seeing is now two things happening. You're seeing a lift on the outer corner of the eye you're also seeing a lengthening that's going on because I'm going to slowly soften and blend this shadow to come out and match this outer corner of my eyebrow. On this other side that I'm doing incorrectly, I am just going to follow this natural lash line and I'm going to block in with that darker brown. where my eye actually ends. Okay, now I'm going to take my blending brush and I'm just going to whisk this together to raise it a little bit and soften it. This I'm just following the shape that I've created. Now I'm going in with the light highlight color 
And here I am just sweeping right, hugging really, really tight to my brow bone and just underneath my eyebrow, not going too far down because we don't want to create too much heaviness on that side because we brought our warmer color up higher. The mistake often on this side, the droopy side, is to do too much white here, which really emphasizes that orbital bone and the droopiness that naturally occurs in the eye. I'm already seeing a big difference. <laughs> liner is really gonna emphasize this. So on the correct eye, I'm using a black liner. I'm gonna top line, which means I come from underneath and I hug the eyelashes coming from the underside. So you're basically just sort of going back and forth I'm not going all the way down. Again, I remember I created that artificial end point, so that's where I start, right there. And I am just swiggling in my lash line. And I don't want this to get onto my lid. This really helps to create an open eye look and not heavy on the top. We're basically doing the antithesis of heavy. I'm gonna make the mistake on this side of my face. I'm going to come from the top and I'm going to draw in on my upper lashes. Which is going to eliminate a lot of my lid. The biggest mistake that we make in terms of downturned features and emphasizing that and it's something that you never ever see me do and that is taking an eyeliner and rubbing it in my lower lash line. Now there's a difference when I do a smoky eye I'm actually inner rimming and then I use a very light medium shade to smudge in my lashes but still my emphasis is across the top. It doesn't mean that you can't put shadow in your lash line below but it needs to be on the lighter lighter medium side and not dark but oftentimes we take a dark liner and this is a dark chocolate brown and we line our lower lash line. So now what's going to happen is that's really going to emphasize this lower lid and the lower droop that's going on on the outer corner here. And my shadow. So now I have basically followed along this brow shape line. I have followed my natural eye curvature and in doing so I have created a heavy blocky look that looks sort of sad and older. This side so far is looking much more lighter and more youthful. I am going to leave the bottom lashes alone because I'm going to go with a darker lipstick today. So I don't want to overdo the eye look on the good side. So at this point, I would take my eyelash curler, curl my lashes. And we'll do it on this side too, just so you can see. And now mascara on the good side is only going on the top line. And in doing so, I am continuing to draw the attention upward. Okay, on the wrong side, obviously, we'll be putting mascara on both the top and the lower lashes. God, this reminds me so much of the 80s. Ooh, see with the eyeliner up higher. You don't nearly see the length in the lashes because you've covered too much of your eyelid and therefore your eyelashes up top don't stand out either. All right, now let's, let's bring in some lower lashes. I haven't done this in decades. They look like little spider legs and this is just really exacerbating the problem of droopiness. It's just pulling everything downward. Okay, <laughs> big difference, but I'm not done yet. I still have another trick that I like to do to really help bring the outer corner of the lashes up, create more of a cat eye and a nice lift. 
You know I am a huge fan of the magnetic, whoopsie, the magnetic outer wing lashes. They're just floating around on this tray here. Hold on. Okay. The magnetic outer wing lashes. Um, I'm going to use the outer for the left side that you're seeing. These are the 0 0.2 millimeter and they just go right here on the outer corner. But really create once they're on a nice little added lift. To the eye. And you see how that just gave me that extra little pull. It thickened the lashes here in the outer corner, but it also created such a nice lift going up and out compared to the spider droop that I've got going on here on the right side. All right, so eye makeup is done. Concealer. The other trick is with the good eye, I use the concealer to clean up anything that's dark that may be hanging below and really help keep that line nice and clean going no farther than the outer corner of this eyebrow. Everything kind of sweeps up to match it. On this side, I'm matching now this downward turn. Okay. Just going to set the area with powder. And I'm going to set my foundation now with powder because we're going to move on to contour, blush, and then eventually lipstick. Okay, here's another area where we run into trouble and that's contour and blush placement. Where you place it is everything in terms of how your cheeks and how your face will lift. So here's a contour and highlight palette. I'm going to use the darkest contour shade. On the wrong side here, I will contour a little bit on the low side. So I am in the hollow of my cheek going a little bit lower. On the right side, I'm going to hug just under my cheekbone and I'm not going to come as far down. So I'm just going to hug right here. It's a little bit higher than the other side. I'm not going as far down as I did on the other. So the, this one, the good one, is here. The bad one is thicker and lower. On the good side of the face, I'm going to do a little bit of contouring in the forehead just for warmth. Also, as we age, our noses elongate. So on the good side, I'm going to do, it's kind of weird doing a half contour at the tip of my nose, but I'm going to try and ever so slightly also to slenderize. Very light handed. Here's the other trick for contouring. Faces tend to sag. We get jowls and heaviness here. So on the good side to combat that, I'm actually going to ride a little bit higher on the jaw, the jaw line. Okay, because what you want to do is you don't want to highlight areas that are starting to get heavy and protruding. You actually want to conceal those. So we're just going to make a really, better not talk, we're going to make a really nice straight line just a little bit higher. And then gently pull down. So I'm essentially creating a new artificial jawline. This side I'll leave alone just for full effect. Placement of blush, placement of blush. Okay, on the wrong side, we're going to take our plummy colored blush and we're going to go just above our contour. Gonna fill it in here on the lower side. Ooh, I used just a little too much. Hold on. Okay. Blush is coming forward and it's a little heavy and it's a little low. That's the mistake. 
The correct way is a teeny, teeny, tiny bit, and this may shock you. It is way up high. All right, you want an instant facelift? You put your blush way up high, starting right up here on the cheekbone. We are staying out to the side. We are high and we're up. Shockingly up, but this immediately creates the illusion of not only higher cheekbones, but the illusion of going upward. I mean, I can, I can purely see the difference as I look in the mirror here of just being a little bit softer, but the placement of the contour and the blush higher and more out to the side is really transformative in how your face reads. Okay, now comes the next, probably most important part. That is how we draw in and define our lips. So I, as you can see, I naturally have a downturn in my mouth, always have, always. So my, my lips have always kind of come out and arced downward. And as I get older, it becomes even more pronounced. So how do I counteract that? Simple, it's where I draw in my lips. So on the bad side, mistake number one is using a very heavy lip liner the same or darker than your actual lipstick. So that's what we're gonna do on the wrong side is we are going to go deep, dark, and overdraw. So the last thing that I wanna do is follow my natural lip line, which is what I will do and go just slightly outside. Basically, I followed the shape of my mouth. It's come down. I've met in the corner. And that's what a lip line drawn to your natural shape looks like. Here is how you correct a downturned mouth. You're actually cheating. I'm going with a lighter, more of a nude type of a lip pencil that will go with almost any shade lipstick. This is really just to create framework. So the key is you're coming from underneath. You, you want to get rid of this roundness and this downturn here. And the way to do that is to come from the underside and create a new line. Instead of rounding here, I'm also going to make a little more of a point here. I've come under this round curve, flattened it a little, and then I'm cheating like when you grin and your, your lips go out to the side, sort of creating that line on the bottom. A little bit out. on the bottom. Okay. To help with that, I have a highlighter pencil that I run slightly on top of this newly created line. To help block in and eliminate that natural boundary of my lip. and lighten just above the area where I used my lip liner. All right, so lipstick, it's a matte pencil, kind of a plum color. I'm gonna follow the line of my natural lip line on the wrong side. Now on the correct side, I'm going to follow this new line. The color is not going on the outside, it's coming from the bottom. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my, what a difference. Okay, just to help, let's do this. Ready? The wrong side. Do you see how following my own natural lines and shapes created such a downturn? The right side. How using what I have and cheating and flicking out has now created a completely new line, a new look, and it's as if I went to a doctor's office. The power of makeup. It is profound. I think this really demonstrates how, with just the right technique, you can completely change the look of your face. I mean, it, it amazes me, the difference. And I love, honestly, how makeup technique has evolved. I mean, when you think about it, this is, that's what we did in the 80s. We just, we did that. And we weren't doing our, I mean, granted, we were younger, but we weren't doing ourselves any favors. But now that we're older and more mature and we're wiser, we now have the ability to take. And here's the thing, I'm wearing dark colors. People always say, oh, you know, you don't wear dark colors. It emphasizes all the wrong things. Not true, it's how you do it. You can wear reds, you can wear plums, you can wear anything. The right shade, the right hand, and the right application makes all the difference in the world. I want you to be able to sit in your bathroom and feel empowered, feel like you have ways, you have tricks, you know, these are your scalpels, okay? That's how powerful they are. It's all in your ability. Take the time, figure it out, enjoy learning. It's always wonderful to learn new things and you get to immediately see, experience, and feel the difference. I'd love to stay, but I have to go wash off half of my face and reapply it before I go to work. But I've loved being here for you. Lay down what you want to see. Follow me on social media. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell to get notified every Thursday at 1 o'clock when I release a video. Share me with friends, family, and neighbors because I love you and I want more people to love. Go out. Be bold and be blessed. Be amazed. And I'll see you next Thursday. Bye.